In today's video, we're going to discuss Java's thread.sleep method and when, if ever, to use it in our Selenium tests. You're watching Automate Now. I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. In the last few videos, we've been talking about the different types of weights that we have in Selenium WebDriver, such as explicit weights and implicit weights. Today, we're going to be talking about a different type of weight that I like to refer to as a hard weight. This is not a weight that Selenium offers, but instead one that the programming language offers. In our case, we're using Java. This means that we're going to be discussing thread.sleep in Java. And here we have the official definition for thread.sleep. It says that the current thread is suspended for a specified period. The following point is very important, and it is that thread.sleep is not the same as using an implicit or explicit weight. In an implicit or explicit weight, we're specifying how long we want to wait for a given element or a given condition to be present. So let's say that we're using an explicit weight and we're willing to wait up to 10 seconds for a given element to be displayed on the screen. If the element shows up after two seconds, then the test will continue execution. It will not pause for the entire 10 seconds to continue execution. It will do so as soon as the condition is met. But with a thread that sleep, the test will pause for as long as you specified, regardless if the element is present or not. Let's take a look at an example. And here we have a test that is going to navigate to automatenow.io. Then we use thread.sleep to pause for five seconds. And then we try to locate an element to get its text. And the way that this is going to work is that first it's going to navigate to automatenow.io. Then it's going to come to this statement here, thread.sleep. It is going to pause for five seconds. This test will not continue execution after one or two or three seconds. It will pause for the entire five seconds before it moves on to the next statement here. You will also notice that this test throws an interrupted exception. This is the type of exception that can occur if another thread tries to interrupt the thread that our test is running on while it is sleeping. There is a way of handling this type of exception as we're going to see next. This is the same test that we saw before, except that in this case, we're not declaring that it throws an interrupted exception. Instead, we're using a try catch block in order to handle the exception in case it occurs. And now you may be wondering when you should use thread.sleep. And the answer is simple. You should try to avoid using thread.sleep at all costs. This is because the use of thread.sleep can result in long running tests if it is used excessively. Instead, you should try to use implicit or explicit weights whenever possible. With an implicit or explicit weight, your test only pause for as long as it is necessary. However, when you use thread.sleep, your test will pause for as long as you specified in the sleep method. It will not care if a condition has been met. It will wait for the entire time that you specify. With that said, there may be times when it is convenient to use thread.sleep. For example, when you're giving a presentation of an automated test scenario to a team member, or when you're debugging a test script. On the other hand, there may be times when you have tried everything and nothing seems to work except thread.sleep. In that case, it is okay to use thread.sleep, but try to limit the amount of time that you're waiting as much as possible. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe to help support this channel. Thanks so much.